Welcome. This is TechWorks CC Series Clinical System Tech Training Part 4. I am Mark Dundas, and I'll be your host. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. The audience for this training is anyone that wants to design or install a TechWorks CC2 series system. Again, this is part four. I assume by this time you've watched parts one, two, and three, and you also have a good understanding of healthcare communications products such as nurse call. We won't do much review. This part four is system programming. We're gonna talk about how this system communicates and how you set it up, what you do to make it work. There is a presentation guide handout available online if you wanna to go to the website and download that. Also following this training, there is a certification test for installers. If you complete all four parts of the test and pass the test, we will send you a certificate of authorization as a TechWorks installer. So let's talk about the dome light. As we talked about in previous sections, there are smart devices and passive devices. We're not going to talk about passive devices in this section because there's no programming on a passive device. It does whatever the smart device is programmed to do when it hooks to the screw terminal. So passive devices, there's no programming. However, the, this dome light is smart. It's got a network connector. That means it's hooked to the network. So therefore it's a smart device. That network connector connects it to the rest of the world and it talks via that twisted pair network. The Terminator, as we talked before, is there to keep the network quiet so that no messages are missed. This is your address switch. Most important part of this presentation is how these addresses affect what happens on a network and who talks to who. Also, the option switches. The option switches here in the middle, this one and this one, are what determines what happens when you connect a switch and you push a button. What happens to the light? So whatever you hook a passive station to this device, the contact closure from those switches sends a message out to the network, which is determined by this option switch setting. RS4, same thing. Again, it's a smart station. It's got a network connector and it has the dip switches. So there's your network connector, which has your two twisted pair network. There's your terminator to keep the noise down on the network. And here's your address switch. We're going to talk extensively about what that address switch does and how these options affect what happens when you push a button. First of all, the master address concept. So you can have up to eight masters in a system or enunciators in a system. So each of these masters has eight columns. We'll talk about that next. But right now we're talking about getting this room. So you got a button and a dome light at a room, and we're going to get that dome light onto an enunciator, one of the eight enunciators. So those dip switches, the master dip switch makes this set of stations any one of these eight enunciators. You set these two devices the same and they talk to each other. So a red button push here activates a red light here, but it also winds up on one of eight enunciators based on how you set up the address switch for the enunciator or master address. The master is the enunciator. Again, the station address here, both master and column, mean that these two talk to each other. Who they talk to over here is determined by the selection of one of eight masters and one of eight columns. So you've got the master address and then you have the column address. The dip switches are in binary. So master one becomes address zero. 
this dip switch on the back of these devices is labeled as master address zero through seven. That means that master address one is really a zero or all switches off. If I wanna be on enunciator number two, I have to put on binary switch one, which is address switch one goes to number two. If I wanna be on number three, I put on address switch two, see here, one, two, and four, put on two, that goes to enunciator three. If I address this as three, a one plus a two, see one plus two equals three, that goes to enunciator four. So this is zero, one, two, three, which is really the fourth enunciator. Address four, which is this number four dip switch turned on, means it's going to appear on number five. If I turn on four and one, that's a five. Four plus one equals five. That's enunciator number six. Number seven is four plus two, which is six, which is really the seventh enunciator. And if all the dip switches are on, it's one plus two plus four equals seven, which is your eighth enunciator. That's the conversion of binary to hex or to uh, base 10 numbers. Let's talk about the columns. Now you got another set of dip switches on here. You got two little sets of dip switches, if you recall. One is master, the other is your column. The column dip switch assigns it to one of eight columns on the enunciator. Again, it's binary. So the first column is really column zero, and this right-hand one is column seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If all the dip switches are off, that's column zero, which is the first column. If I turn on binary switch one, that's column one, which is really the second column. And binary switch two goes to column three. Binary switches one and two, which is column three, is actually the fourth column. Five is column four, which is the fourth dip switch. One, two, four. So four in binary is the fifth column. Six would be column five, which is Four plus one equals five in binary. Seven would be four plus two equals column seven. And all dip switches on four plus two plus one equals seven, which is column seven, which is really your eighth column. Let's talk a bit about functions. So, the functions are these two option dip switches, option one and option two. In the case shown, they're both off. This is the default. This is how it's shipped. What does that mean? It means that whenever you push any of the buttons on this station or close the switch contact on a dome light, you're going to get a function of first push turns the light on steady. So if I push this yellow button the first time with both of these dip switches in the off position, I'm going to turn this light on steady and that light on steady if these two are addressed exactly the same. Same for green. If I push it once, it's going to turn it on steady. The second push of any button is going to change it from steady to fast flashing. So it doesn't matter if I push the red, the green, the yellow, the blue. First one's going to be steady. Second one's going to change it to fast flashing. When I push this button, any of these buttons, the third time, it's going to turn the light off. If there is a tone installed, if you ordered your dome light as a part number ending in a T, you will have a tone installed. That tone will not sound with both option switches off. 
we used to call this our quiet software because it doesn't make a lot of noise. It keeps things quiet. A lot of, lot of button push functionality, a lot of things you can do here, but the tone is silent. All buttons send the same message. Let's talk about if we turn on option switch one. So now option switch one is to the right or up, depending on the orientation of the switch on the back of the device, but it's in the on position. Option switch two is off. Now what this means is that all buttons send the same message, but now it's a simpler message. If I push any of these buttons once, I'll send a steady light. I'm just gonna turn the light on. It on and it stays on. I push it a second time and I turn it off. If there is a tone installed, now what happens is if I address both of these the same, the address is affected by these, which is your binary, one, two, and four. The options do not have to be the same between these two devices. If I set this on this, it's going to send a steady message on first push. So I push a button, turns the light on. Push the button again, turns it off. If the dome light is set the same way and it has a tone installed, the tone is going to beep every time a light comes on and then it's going to stop and it's going to wait 10 seconds and it's going to beep again. It's going to have a reminder tone in it. Let's say you don't want that. Let's say you want the functionality of this being a on, steady, off, but you don't want your dome light to beep. Then don't turn option switch one on on the dome light. Only the address the master address and the column address have to match for these two to be interactive. If you want this one to send this type of messaging on steady off and this not to beep, don't turn the option on on the dome light, turn it on on the four button station. If you want the tone to beep, turn the dip switch to the on position and then the tone will behave. It'll turn on. Let's talk about option two. So now we have option one off and option two on. What's going to happen? This makes the top button function different than the lower three. So the red or top color becomes a first push fast flash for an emergency or staff assist call. Second push turns that light off. However, the bottom three function like a clinical system. First push is on steady, second push is flashing, third push is off. Now this makes it great for putting this inside the room and giving staff a staff assist button on top while maintaining doctor follow functionality on the bottom three colors. So that makes this top button a staff assist. Whenever you push it, it's going to send a fast flashing message to the network, light the dome light fast flash on the outside. However, the bottom three buttons are going to all function the same. Push me once, I'm on steady. Push me again, I'm flashing. Push me the third time, I'm off. What's a tone going to do? If there's a tone installed, it's going to beep on fast flashing red only. So if you want this dome light to beep when there's a tone built in, first of all, it's got to have a T on the end of the part number, then whenever they push this button and it goes to fast flash, you want this to blink and fast flash, you would set all dip switches the same. Again, if you don't want your dome light to beep, turn this off. The options do not have to match between these two. Only the column and the master address have to match. Let's talk about both of these on. If both dip switches are on, it makes all buttons send a fast flash on first push and off on the second push. Why would you want this? This is typically used on a dome light, and we call it the noisy setting because it's if there's a tone installed, it's going to make a noise on any light. 
So if you've got this thing set up, doesn't matter how you have your options set on your four button station, your dome light can beep on every tone if you just turn both dip, dip switches on, both option dip switches. The tone will sound a single tone on a steady light, on any steady light, on any button, any color. It will sound a reminder tone if there is a steady light on for more than 10 seconds. And it will send a fast tone or fast beeping tone associated with any fast flashing light. So pretty flexible. All the buttons function exactly the same. Doesn't matter which button you hook to, it's going to do the same thing with, with both option switches on. So red, yellow, green, blue, all do the same thing. Let's talk about enunciators. We make a variety of enunciators, starting with our four color enunciator. It's the same as the four button enunciator. It comes in different colors. This is N for no color. You can get it in bright colors, red, yellow, green, and blue, or pastels. But there's no buttons in here. This is not a send or transmit station. All it's going to do is it's going to act as a mini enunciator. It's got a tone built in. See the T on the end of the part number? It's got a tone built in. So anytime you set it up to make a noise, it's going to make a noise. Again, it's a network device, so it's smart. It's got the terminator. It's got all that. It's got the address. Now, what's that address mean? In this case, it's set up to be matching. It's a four button enunciator that's set up to match a four button station. You can light any one of these lights by pushing any one of the buttons on a matching four button station. Or it could match a control module. Maybe you've got a control module, a CC2 CM4 control module out there. This could be your mini enunciator. Again, the address has to match for this to enunciate out there. Your options, however, are just like previously described. Let's talk about your 16 light enunciator. It uses a bottom board where your connector is on the back of the bottom board, and then your network terminator is on the top. So you don't have to take the device off the wall to terminate the network. And your address is down here on the bottom. This is a rotary hex switch. We share the same bottom board hardware between NC and CC. There's 16 positions on this rotary switch of which only the first eight work on a CC system. So zero through seven bottoms pointing straight down is zero. Going clockwise, it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And number seven is right here. That's your highest number enunciator or eight, number eight. Your option switches are right here. You've got two banks of option switches on your enunciator panels, and we'll talk more about those in a moment. The eight column enunciator uses the same bottom board again. The difference with this enunciator is it has a silence button on the front to silence a tone if one is active. The network connector is on the back, just like before the network terminator. The, uh, the addressing switch is exactly the same, exactly the same. It's zero through seven. You've got another eight that are wasted because we don't have that many addressing uh, settings on a clinic call system because of wire length and dip switch settings on the substations. So you only use zero through seven. And again, you have the option switches here, two banks of option switches, because there's lots of functionality built into every one of these units. Let's talk about that functionality. So these option dip switches are down here on the bottom behind this faceplate. And you've got four options here. You got option one, option two, option three, and then a tone option. If all of these are off, this thing is going to do nothing but listen. It will not send any messages to the network itself. It just sits here and listens and lights up and tones based on how you have it set up. However, 
If you want it to do Dr. Follow, one of the unique things about this product is it has a simplified Dr. Follow built in. So it can track button pushes by color. Let's talk about how Dr. Follow works. If any of these red lights come on in sequence, they can come on in any order, any order. It can be the fourth one and then the first one and then the eighth one and then the third one. But any of these colors come on, what happens is this enunciator keeps track of the order they came on in and sends a slow flashing message to the network to tell the network, this is the next patient for this provider. This light came on first. These others, if they're lit, ignore them for right now. They're going to be on. They're going to be on, but they're just going to be on steady. Only the light that is next for that provider is slow flashing. Same for yellow. If there's a yellow light comes on, it's going to keep track of which yellow light came on first and send a slow flashing message to that station that that is the next priority for that provider. Same thing for green, same thing for blue. So the next patient slow flashes, that's the key. Let's talk about option number one. Turn that first option switch on and you get what's called dual doctor follow. So on an eight column master, it splits this in half and the left-hand four are tracked separate from the right-hand four, meaning any one of these red lights that comes on first is going to be changed from an on steady to a slow flash. Any other light that comes on in that group of four will remain on steady until it is the next patient for that provider. In this group, in the right-hand four, they are tracked separately. So any one of these four lights that comes on, it will be changed to slow flash. This enunciator will send a message to the network saying, this is the next light for this group of four. Okay? Same thing again for yellow, green, and blue. If you turn on option number two, this is your classic doctor follow. It covers an entire eight columns. So any one of these eight, it's going to keep track of who came on next. And it's going to send a slow flashlight to the network for that group of eight by color. Again, yellow's tracked separate, green's tracked separate, blue's tracked separate. So any green light on the eight columns that comes on will be the next for that provider. Option number three. This is called Expanded Doctor Follow. It covers 16. I have never in my life seen a doctor cover 16 exam rooms, but I have seen an x-ray technician. So you might have a situation where the emergency calls are over 16 rooms and the x-ray technician covers 16 rooms. But unfortunately, the doctors and the nurses and those kind of people don't typically cover 16 rooms. They only cover four at a time. With this level of technology, it's kind of all or nothing. You can't just say, I want to cover 16 rooms of the yellow and only four at a time of the green. This is a very simple technology in here. So these option switches determine either half a master, all of a master, or two masters, and it's all colors are the same. If you want more functionality, you need an IMR. Talk about tone options. A part of this is a second bank of dip switches right here that's labeled R1, R2, R3, and R4. Each one of those switches turns the tone on associated with a row of lights. So if you turn R1 on, you're going to get lights with a tone on red only. If you want lights on yellow to sound a tone, you turn on R2. Let's say I'm an x-ray technician and I have this enunciator. I don't give a darn if there's an emergency call. I don't give a darn what's happening with green or blue, but I care when a light comes on for yellow because that's me. That might be a reason to turn the red 
or I'm sorry, the row two yellow light tone on. Then it would alert the x-ray technician anytime a yellow light comes on. R3 is green or row three. R4 is to turn on the tone associated with blue or R row four. Repeating tones with a fast flashing light are the only thing that comes on by default when you turn these switches on. So steady colors, steady lights are gonna get ignored. They're, they're not gonna sound a tone. Only the tone associated with a fast flashing light is going to sound a tone. Low flashing lights, steady lights, not gonna make a noise. If you want all tones to make a noise, the other bank of dip switches where we had the options, option one, option two, option three that did the doctor follow, the fourth switch on that option dip switch is tone. Tone on steady light. By turning that on, now any light changes at all, steady or flashing, will sound a tone, and a steady lamp will have a 10-second reminder tone after any light is on. Let's talk about the MC16T, which is essentially an enunciator with buttons. It gives you the ability to control four different rooms from one location. So each column on this represents a four button station and or a corresponding dome light. The buttons are on the front, they're behind these windows. So you just push the window and you, you turn lights on and off. Again, addressed exactly the same as any other enunciator. Well, that wraps up programming and that wraps up our series on the clinical system. Again, we're here to help. Multiple tools on the website, available 24-7, 365. Brochures for sales, specifications for engineers. We're happy to help with custom specifications on any of our products. We're always here for design assistance and questions. We always appreciate it if before you call for design or technical assistance, you take the time to look at the installation or system guide on the website. All of this training is available on the website. Please watch the video, look at the installation manual, the system guide before you call. But we are here to help. Call us. We're, we'll help you through any crazy idea or combination or problem you're having. That concludes this section, uh, part four of the programming of the TechWorks Clinical System. Thank you very much for your time. Take the test, get certified, and thank you for supporting TechWorks.